Hey, Michael, you said you guys were going to get creative. Um, obviously, JaVale with the start tonight alongside Nicola. Uh, what was your impression of, of how that pairing worked tonight? Oh, I thought it was great. You know, it's something that we've talked about trying, to be honest, ever since we got JaVale. And with three games to go uh, against a pretty big team in Minnesota, uh, we figured let's throw it out there. You know, we can put Aaron at the three, showcase his versatility, slide Nicole to the four, and let JaVale just be that, you know, defensive presence, backline defender, which he was. Uh, you know, so Nicole gets 14 boards, JaVale gets 13. Um, yes, overall, I thought those guys were uh, played off of each other very well. Brandon Cristal. Hey, Coach. Uh, sorry if it's loud. I'm sitting here at the Avs game in the little hallway by Mr. K's office. Um, I'm curious, and if you touched on this pregame, I'm sorry. Was there thought about limiting Joker's minutes at all? Or once he's out there, you just go, right? Like playing him 15 and once he's loose and ready to go. And what are the conversations like about these final two games? Because we know he wants to play in every game, but, you know, sometimes you have to protect him from himself, if that's the right word. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those situations where, you know, if he's going to play, he's going to play. Um, you know, it, obviously, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of concern for the potential of injuring uh, and having Nicole get hurt. Um, Nicole could get hurt in practice uh, after the Portland game as we prepare for the playoffs. So um, he wanted to play tonight. We talked, training staff, myself, Nicola. He deserves to have a, a voice in that conversation. Uh, and then once we get to Detroit, you know, uh, we'll figure out how we're going to approach these last two. But um, it's one of those situations where, you know, he, he did not want to. And I agreed, hey, we're only going to play you 10 minutes tonight. Well, if that's the case. Let's not play you at all. Um, so, you know, we were able to get through the game. Uh, obviously, Austin Rivers took a hit in the first half. I wasn't sure if he'd be able to come back. He had to leave the bench area and get checked on by, by their doctors. But thankfully, he was OK. So no worse for the wear. Pulled out the win. Uh, Fourth quarter defense was phenomenal. And guys like Marcus Howard and Vladko Chanchar went out and played really well for us, which is great to see. Ryan Blackburn. Coach, I was just going to ask you about both of those guys. It was a good sign to see both of them uh, get shots up and, and do really well. What were you most impressed with with their approach to the game tonight? Playing the right way. I mean, you know, both of those guys, Vladko, uh, had 14 points, five of seven from the field, three of four from three. Uh, Marcus goes out and gets 15 points, five of 10 from the field, four of eight from three. Uh, but the great thing about it was I don't think either one of them forced it. Uh, they played within the offense. They played within themselves. And when the ball found them, they were ready. I thought Blanco's floor game was outstanding. He's a high IQ player. Uh, really great job of reposting Nicola when they kicked it out. You know, neither neither Marcus nor Vladko forced anything tonight, which a lot of guys, when they're put in a situation where they play minutes that they normally don't get, they try to do too much. So I, I just really respected and appreciated those guys playing within the team framework and, uh, and and having great nights. Those guys have worked their butts off the entire year. So the whole locker room, what I love about our team, I walk in, the whole locker room, led by Will Barton, is excited that Vlatko had the on-court interview after the game, the podium game, and both guys had career highs. Uh, so that, that's always fun to see when teammates are supporting one another. Joel Rush. Hey, Coach. Uh, kind of circling back to JaVale and uh, Jokic playing together, um, I think they combined for 11 offensive rebounds tonight, and you guys doubled them in the paint. Um, just, of course, with all your guards uh, depleted um, on your roster right now, is that one thing you might be able to go to just in terms of one scoring option, just kind of dominating the offensive glass like that? Yeah, I mean, I think we can go to a lot of different options. Uh, you know, as we approach the playoffs, with now two games to go, we can try some more different things. Uh, obviously, the playoffs are all about matchups. Is it a big team? Is it a small team? But at least we know now, and, and I knew they'd be able to play together I didn't I didn't expect them to have the night they had the first time doing so but Nicola in his six years has played alongside Mason Plumley. he's so skilled he can play off of and with any other big and he's going to make them better uh, to your point the their effectiveness on the offensive glass uh 
we have scored them 60 to 30 in the paint, to your point. Uh, so it's just a, a confidence builder knowing that you can go to a really big lineup. And Jermichael and Paul Millsap off the bench were terrific. Paul had five assists. Jermichael Green had four assists. Uh, Aaron Gordon had four assists. Nicola had four assists. We had 30 as a team. So, um, you know, even with all the injuries that we have, we still have a, a lot of versatility that we can use within the roster. Alexander Zikic. Coach, congratulations on the victory. Now that the uh, regular season is almost over, are you happy with how everything turned out in the beginning? There were some games where the third quarter was a problem. There was some concern, but it turned out that everything worked out great, it seems. And also, is tonight's victory a little bit of a revenge for what happened three years ago in Minneapolis when uh, the Timberwolves defeated Nuggets uh, seconds before the end and, and disqualified Nuggets from the, getting to playoffs? Yeah, that was my pregame speech, Alexander, was this is a revenge game. Let's go get it. <laughs> uh, no, you know, the funny thing is about that, I, I wasn't even aware of this until Charles Class, one of my assistant coaches, brought it to my attention. Um, we lost to them in game 82. Really was the play-in game before they came up with a formal play-in game. Uh, we lost to them in overtime. Uh, since that point in time, I believe we're 11-0 and against the Minnesota Timberwolves. So... Uh, we've been doing something right against this team. Uh, to your earlier question, we started the year off one and four. Uh, you know, very, very slow start to the year, disappointing start to the year. Um, but even though everybody in Nuggets Nation was probably panicking, uh, asking for me to be fired, asking for players to be traded, uh, we never panicked. I think since January 2nd, we have the second best record in the NBA behind the Utah Jazz. And we were still trying to incorporate so many new players to this team. That doesn't happen overnight. And uh, we got Jamichael Green back healthy in January, uh, which really helped us out. And since that point in time, we've played at a high level, both offensively and defensively. Two games to go, then into the postseason. Um, again, just really proud of our guys that we continue to find ways to win games with no Jamal, no Will, no PJ, no Monte, you name it. And uh, I, you couldn't ask for a better group of guys in a lot. All right, Coach, we got time for one more. We're going to end with Vinny Benedetto. Hey, Michael, you guys give up 37 points in the third, close with only allowing 14 in the fourth. I guess how, how encouraging was that to see your guys kind of get back into it, lock in on the defensive end to close that one out? Yeah, I brought that up after the game in our locker room. Uh, obviously, that third quarter defense was unacceptable. 37 points allowed. I think Anthony Edwards, who, by the way, is a hell of a young player. Wow. Really impressive talent. Uh, I think he had 18 of that 37. He really got it going. Uh, but to respond in that fourth quarter, you know, we were struggling to make shots ourselves. But that's where your defense has to be your anchor. When you're struggling to score, struggling to make shots, you have to rely upon your defense and your defensive rebounding to keep you in the game. And that allowed us to win it. Uh, to your point, it was 14 points allowed and only 25% from the field. And I think uh, after 70 games now, I think we're a top four fourth quarter defense. Don't look at the third quarter because it's not nearly as, uh, as effective. But uh, in that fourth quarter, we're able to lock in defensively usually, and that allows you to pull out some close games like tonight. All right. Thank you, Coach. Yep, thank you.